Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we'll be doing question um, FAR 210, question 3, which is on uh, the topic receivables and that will take the final exam July 2021. So let's start. This is the question. Um, you have Green Love, which is a trading company located at Kota Baru Kelantan and these were the transactions extracted from the books of accounts for the year ended 31st of December 2020. That was the current financial year and at the beginning of the year there were this allowance for impairment of trade receivables of 12,000. This is just the balance at the beginning of the year that will be shown in the uh, allowance for impairment of trade receivable account in case you are asked to prepare the accounts or if you are asked to prepare the statement of allowance for impairment of trade receivable second one 10 of january you issued invoice i'm referring you as the green love syndrome berhad green love berhad sorry uh, 200,000 for the goods delivered to rubber for you which is your customer on credit so this is credit sales which give rise to accounts receivables uh, rubber for you which is a financial asset so this one is the need for you to uh, look further later and you have this goods be sold on credit again 60,000 to another company Ungol Pharmacy and you accepted a 60 day note 10 percent that is the interest rate uh, in full payment for the delivery of the goods. So you deliver the goods and you accepted a notes. And this is notes receivable. And the notes receivable is the one that you receive from Ungol Pharmacy on 15th of May. The next one is 10th of, 10 of September. You have rubber for you that was declared bankrupt. Right? 80% of the amount owed is collected. So you managed to get collection from the customer. And... Um, the company director decided to write off the remaining as uncollectible, meaning that this is considered as a bad debt and it is 20% that was uncollectible. And last information is on the amounts of receivable uh, at the end of the year, 31st of December. So this will be the balance that you uh, will have to show in your account before any adjustment that may have taken place but as at 31st of december this is the balance in case you have other adjustment you may have to go and incorporate the adjustment next let's look at the ident the requirement you are asked to identify whether transaction on 10 of january and 15 of may give rise to financial asset so these were the transaction on 10 of january where the first one gave rise to accounts receivable and the 15 of May that give rise to notes receivable. So here is where the company Green Glove, um, that is the seller, sold goods on credit. This is the what actually happened. And that uh, there were two entities and uh, rubber for you. You have the amount owing due to the credit sales that give rise to a financial assets account receivable. And there's another one on 15 of May where you accepted uh, the 10% the notes for the goods that you have delivered for a 60 days period to get the payment and that was a, a written promise on credit and that is uh, the notes receivable so the answer would be yes most transaction give rise to financial asset uh, put the dates put the uh, both date uh, to get the marks there and then delivery of goods on 10 of January is the one that created the contractual rights as well as on 15 of May where goods were delivered uh, for these two transactions. And as a result, Green Glove will have the right to receive cash or other financial asset from another entities in return for the goods being delivered. So the customer has the contractual obligation to pay to our company. So we have the contractual um, obligation as well to deliver goods to the uh, company all right so we in return for that we have the contractual rights to uh, get the cash from the two companies or or maybe their financial assets respectively the question part 3b 
you are to discuss the two types of receivable we have already uh, identified the two types of receivable on 10 of January and 15 of May and for two marks so these were the transaction again to recall and answer 3b would be on 10 of January that give rise to accounts receivable which is a financial asset and uh, the amount owed by the customer which result from the sale of goods and services where the goods were delivered and received by your customer and on 15 of May 10 percent notes receivable were received by your company for the claims that was the return promise uh, of uh, the goods that were delivered and these were given by the customer as a return prom promise which is the formal instruments of credit that were issued as a proof of taking the goods on credit next is to determine the journal entries to record the necessary journal entries to record the transaction for the year and the 31st of december whatever transaction here that could have been journalized information number one and information the last information 1st january and 31st of december there is no journal entry for those two here none there will be no journal entry for this and this this is just information we'll be going to do the one for 10 of january we start with the first one on 10 of January, you have the invoice being issued and that was for the good delivered on credit. So the journal entry is to debit account receivable rubber for you, 200,000 and credit the sales revenue, 200,000. So that was credit sales. Next is the transaction on 15 of May. Make sure to put the date there. 15 of May is the next one. So goods on credit to Ungur Pharmacy and you accept a 60-day note on the same day so that give rise to accounts receivable no that give rise to notes receivable on 15 of may that was 60,000 due to the credit sales next is the, the case where the customer rubber for you was declared bankrupt and 80 percent were collectible so the part that were collectible is collected later that is for you to debit the cash or the bank and for the remaining 20% that cannot be collected, directors decided to write off. This must be written off as bad debt. So the debit to the bank account is for the 80% out of the 200,000 that you have here, the outstanding amount from uh, rubber for you. And debit allowance for impairment. To write off the bad debt, you go and debit the allowance for impairment of trade receivable, which is also known as AFIT R, the short or the acronym for it. And you credit accounts receivable, so which means that the allowance movement now has somehow reduced by 40,000, where at the beginning it was 12,000. So we need to see what caused the movement apart from the um the bad debts being written off so the amount outstanding owing by the or the account receivable the total is 750000 and um the bad debts was written off earlier than 31st of december next green glove produced the following aging analysis of receivable which is making some kind of forecast of the collectability of the customers that take credits from us due to goods sold on credit right here goods sold on credit so you have the table there giving the expected uh, percentage of not being able to be collected which is the expected credit loss rate so green glove uh, estimated estimated credit loss based on its historical loss experience and adjusted for forward looking estimate so historical credit, credit loss experience from the pre, uh, previous experience they have estimated that 0.5% uh, chances will be maybe will not be able to be collected uh, from the the one that has passed the due date which is within the maturity uh, and they, it was classified according to the past due date so the different percentage is given for different past due dates according to the number of days and just to, to highlight um, the uh, historical credit loss experience if you relate to the COVID-19 pandemic 
that has impact the cash flow generating ability of many entities, especially our uh, customers, our trade receiver, or maybe our own self, if we are the one that is buying goods on credit to pay the other entity for the customer to pay us in a timely manner as per the contractual terms. So they may have problems. And that is why we need to go and uh, estimate what would be the uh, expected credit loss uh, rate of that particular entity, the customer. Entities here refers to reporting entities that need to develop an, an estimate based on the best available information about past uh, events, current condition and forecast of economic condition. This is not the answer, it's just some highlights of the topic because this relates to the um, a, a co collectability of the uh, accounts receivable. So we also need to adjust for the forward looking estimate like the forecast of the economic condition and uh, that has been uh, affected after the impact of the COVID-19. So you are asked to determine the amount of impairment of trade receivable to be recognized in the statement of profit or loss. You need to go and determine whether there is a decrease or there is an increase of the impairment uh, on the trade receivable that will be either charged as an expense or will be uh, recognized as part of other income that is one and the second one is for you to uh, determine the net realizable value of the receivable so there are two things one is this what are the net realizable value and another one is the amount of impairment of trade receivable that need to be recognized in the statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st of December 2020 and the NRV of receivable as at 31st of December 2020. So we are do, going to do that here. First is that to extract the table. So I've taken the table and put it here and we are going to make use of the expected credit loss here uh, rate to get the expected credit loss allowance. Before that, the total account receivable was 750,000 and that was the total account receivable balances coming from all customers. So on subsequent measurement, what would happen is that the company will have to make some question of whether or not uh, the customer or the account receivable, account receivable can be realized or can be collected. And what needs to be done is that the companies need to make estimate of expected credit loss. And under our syllabus, we are just focusing on the simplified approach method. You can refer the details in page uh, 275 of the Tan Leong Tong textbook. And we will be using the provision mix. So uh, that is a requirement of uh, the what requires by MFRS 9. Uh, you can use the provision mix where there will be a calculation of impairment loss based on some default rate percentage. In our case, the default rate percentage is given here, already being given. So we will use that provision mix. There was a mixture of provision here. So we will, will have to calculate the impairment loss based on the historical credit loss experience like from the past experience and also our forward looking estimate and that will be applied to the group of financial asset here accounts receivable and the computation of this default rate to decide this this is normally based on uh, some kind of default rate percentage that are updated and adjusted when necessary to reflect the current and forward uh, forecast for the forward looking estimate like what i sh showed earlier that relates to the impact of COVID-19 or the uh, impact of some natural disaster for example like what happened uh, to certain countries right that has to be incorporated so if you calculate the expected credit loss here the last the column that I have just put here it will be ECL rate multiplied by the amount of standing you have to do it for each uh, categories of past few days so you will be doing that for each multiplied the, ba the balance for e uh, outstanding for each due uh, categories here within maturity 1 to 30 days up until 181 until 365 days multiply by the respective expected credit loss percentage so the total is 22350 so that is the one that will be later shown as the allowance for impairment of trade receivable balance
right? ECL allowed will be shown as balance carried down. So you'll be asked to prepare the statement of movement of allowance for impairment of stability. So let's